If you're looking forward to learning my harp arrangement of Claire de Lune, then this is an important video for you to watch. It's a quick guide to help you learn how to handle the 9-8 time signature and the counting for this piece. It's Anne here from Music Discoveries. Claire de Lune is one of Debussy's most beautiful piano solos, and I transcribed it for Lever Harp, keeping all of my favorite things about the piano solo while making it possible for those of us who play Lever Harp. One of the biggest challenges, whether you play the piece on the piano or the harp, is dealing with the 9-8 time signature and some of the complicated rhythms in the piece. This short video tutorial will give you some practice strategies, so let's get started. Let's begin with the time signature. 9-8 means that there are nine counts in every measure and each count is worth an eighth note. Now in 9-8, those eighth notes will tend to come in groups of threes like this. And we would count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each of these groups of threes can be subdivided down into a dotted quarter note pulse. So we can see that there are three basic pulses in every measure. And this gives us a new way of counting, which is going to be a little bit easier. We could count one and a two and a three and a. That's much easier than counting to nine, isn't it? So nine eight is sometimes called a triple compound time signature. Triple because there are three main pulses in every measure and compound because those pulses are subdivided into groups of threes. So most of Claire de Lune will subdivide into groups of threes like this. One and a two and a three and a. But every so often, Debussy likes to take the basic pulse and subdivide into groups of twos, like this. One and two and three and. Remember that basic pulse needs to stay constant. It needs to stay steady. And you need to be able to subdivide either into those compound groups of threes or the simple groups of twos. So why don't we add a metronome and we can practice doing this. I'll set my metronome to a 44, so just a very, very slow basic pulse. And we'll start by subdividing those pulses into groups of threes. Okay, you ready? Feel the pulse. One, two, three. Count. One and a two and a three and a. Good. Now let's take that pulse and subdivide into groups of twos. Ready? Play. One and two and three and. Good. Now, so do this with me. We're going to leave the metronome on. Now let's clap and count the first line followed by the second line. We'll make that shift from triple groups of threes into the duple groups of twos. Ready? Count. One and a two and a three and a one and two and three and. Tricky, isn't it? And to make it even more complicated, WC really likes to mix and match those subdivisions. So this would be something that you would see in Claire de Lune, a group of three followed by two groups of twos, which sounds like this. One and a two and three and. Let's put the metronome back on and we'll practice clapping and counting all three lines. Okay, do this with me. Here we go. One, two, three. One and a two and a three and a one and two and three and one and a two and three and. Right? Very good. So let's apply this method of counting to a couple of the sections in the piece. 
So here we are at the beginning of Claire de Lune, and you'll notice the first two measures are using subdivisions of threes. But the third measure is a hybrid. We have a group of three followed by two groups of twos. So it's going to sound like this. Here, I'll play it for you. So it sounds like one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a one and a two and three and. Tricky, hey? So, and also notice at the very beginning of the song, you don't start on beat one. Beat one is a rest. So be sure when you start to play that you're counting one and uh, you're coming in on and uh, in your group of three. I'm going to do that one more time so you can watch and listen and maybe even count with me. So here it comes again. One and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a one and a two and three and. Feel that difference when we move to the duple subdivisions. Let's look at another section. Okay, here we are over in section number four. And here we have a measure of double subdivisions and then triples and then doubles again. So it's going to sound like one and two and three and one and a two and a three and a one and two and three and. Here's what it sounds like when I play. One and two and three and one and a two and a three and a one and two and three and. Let's put the metronome back on and see how that fits with the metronome. So I've got it on 44 as my basic pulse. One, two, three. One and two and three and one and a two and a three and a one and two and three and. So I hope this helps get you started. I would encourage you to learn how to verbalize the counting for the entire piece. Playing with the metronome probably isn't the best choice because the basic pulse has to be so slow and that's actually kind of tricky to do. So I would rather see you be able to count out loud and that also gives you the flexibility to add some rubato um, when you're at the stage where you're adding expression to the piece. So please give the video a like if that was helpful and you can go purchase the harp sheet music at musicdiscoveries.shop and you can go and watch the performance video next. Thanks for watching.